Hello, my name is Dan Vukovic. I work for Alliance LLC. And today in this video, I would like to talk about flux meters, Helmholtz coils, and search coils, which are devices used to measure the total flux output of a magnetic material. Uh, they are one of the three main testing methods for permanent magnets, alongside with Gauss meters that measure magnetic flux density, and permeometers, which generate BH curves uh, and are also called hysteresis graph machines. One of the main benefits uh, for using a flux meter instead of a Gauss meter is that with a flux meter you can measure the total flux output of a magnet, whereas with a Gauss meter you can only measure the flux at a certain location. Uh, additionally, a flux meter is highly accurate because you are in fact measuring the entire output of a magnet uh, instead of with a Gauss meter where you're only measuring a certain location on a magnet and the probe has to be held very accurately without movement. Uh, to measure uh, magnetic flux, or in other words, the magnetic lines emitting from a magnet, you need an instrument called a flux meter, which is uh, actually a highly accurate um, integrating voltmeter, or in the most basic terms, a voltmeter that measures change in voltage emitting from a search coil over time. Next, to connect to the flux meter, you need either search coils or Helmholtz coils, which are the devices that generate a weak electric signal for the flux meter to test. Flux meter devices cost several thousand dollars and have various features for simplifying the magnetic test. They can provide measurements in millivolt seconds, Maxwell's, or Weber's. Most will allow the input of a volume of a magnet, and then with the measured flux data from a Helmholtz coil or a search coil, they can provide the magnetic values such as flux density, field strength, polarization, and a relatively accurate residual induction and coercivity. Some of the most reliable manufacturers of these uh, instruments are Maxis Magnet Systems and Magnetic Instrumentation. The unit displayed here is a Maxis FG16, which has several ports for connecting multiple coils simultaneously, both in the back and in the front. And it can be operated with uh, software on a local computer, or it can be connected uh, through a local network. When a magnet is pulled out of the coils, the magnetic lines of flux induce a small electric current and voltage that is then measured by the flux meter. The devices which connect to these flux meters are called search coils and Hemholtz coils. Search coils are custom-made fixtures with a large number of copper windings shaped in a way to provide an electric current when a magnet or a set of magnets are pulled out of the plane of the coil. Uh, they can be a simple transverse coil on a flat holder that can be inserted into a gap between magnets to measure the uh, flux between them, or they can be shaped in a way to encompass the entire magnetic structure of a motor housing where you can obtain a flux for the entire system instead of a single magnet. In some cases, uh, custom-made search coils can be made if you need something on a production line with a very quick way to test multitudes of magnets by simply dropping them through a coil and getting a relative reading. The more common devices for feeding a signal into a flux meter are called Helmholtz coils. Uh, they are sets of two copper windings with a certain radius and height and a number of turns of wire. The reason you have two coils is to provide a uniform signal when placing a magnet inside. When purchasing a Helmholtz coil, it's important to know the size of the magnet being tested. The coil diameter needs to be at the very minimum three times the dimension of the magnet, and the height of the coil is one half the distance of the diameter. So if you're measuring a magnet that is around, say, a quarter of an inch, you would need a coil that's about this size right here, which is about two inches in diameter. You can go larger to maybe three inches, but if you try to use a coil that's eight inches in diameter for a small magnet, the signal will be so weak that it will be barely measurable. Likewise, if you have a very large magnet, uh, if you try to measure it with a coil that's almost the same size as the magnet, the signal will be too strong and won't be as accurate. In that case, you would need a coil that's about 12 inches diameter if you're using a magnet that's about 3 inches. Coils come in various uh, configurations. They all have two coils. They all have certain radiuses and heights and a number of turns of wire. 
but some coils, such as this Maxxis coil right here, has a convenient arm for placing the magnet inside the coil. And what that does is uh, gives you repeatable results because you place the magnet in the same location inside the coil. Most coils, in fact, uh, almost all of them have a coil constant that's either engraved or put on a label on the coil. The coil constant is fed to a flux meter either by being embedded on a chip that's on a connector or if you have an older flux meter, you need to manually input it. A flux meter cannot measure properly if it doesn't know the coil constant of the Helmholtz coil. Unlike Gauss meters and Gauss meter probes, which have to be purchased from the same manufacturer because they're not interchangeable, Helmholtz coils and search coils do not have to be purchased from the same manufacturer of the flux meter. To learn how to do a flux meter test using this equipment, please visit our website or YouTube channel for an instructional video on flux meter testing, and we also have videos for Gauss meter and other testing methods. If you have any questions about any of this, please give us a call at 219-548-3799 or visit our website. Thank you.